Hello, Terriers, and congratulations. Thank you to my fellow trustees, to Dean Fiedler, to the faculty and the staff. It is really a privilege to join you today to celebrate the class of 2016, and also to give another shout out to the parents, grandparents, family, and friends. This is your day, too. As my mother said often, we need to savor the moment. Welcome to the new Boston University alums as you join over 300,000 living alumni on the planet who share a legacy of excellence and commitment to education. Nearly 50 years ago, as I was about to graduate from Com, I could never have imagined standing before you on such an auspicious occasion. You will retain many memories, including, uh, and, and many friends from your BU experience, including the tragedy of the Boston Marathon bombing. Just as the class of 68 remembers the assassination a few months earlier, of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. We learn from these experiences and we move forward to make a better world. And so today, for these few moments together, we're time travelers, going back to the future and simultaneously gazing into a crystal ball, envisioning your journey over the next half century to the year 2066. By sharing the highlights of my family history, I hope to inspire each and every Com graduate, whether you're a first-generation college student or you hail from an established tradition of college-educated folks. Regardless of how you got here, with or without financial aid, and from whatever region of the nation or the world, you are beneficiaries of a world-class academic experience that equips you to compete and contribute to your communities. The key question for us in this moment is what will be your legacy? The American story that I'm about to tell is populated with a cast of characters that includes me, both of my parents, a sister, two uncles, the father of my three children, a nephew, and several cousins. The common denominator between these 20th and 21st century African Americans and each one of you is their BU alumni status. In fact, these nine members of my family have earned 10 graduate or undergraduate degrees at Boston University in law, art, music, violin, history, and communication since 1935. Thank you. This is an important part of my legacy. This odyssey begins nearly 100 years ago when my uncle, Willard Brown, a graduate of West Virginia State, which is an historically black college and university, enrolled in BU Law School and stayed for five years to earn an LLB and an LLM. Segregation and racism paved the way for his BU education, since many Southern states denied admission to Negroes, as we were called then, for graduate programs. However, many qualified, determined Negro students who were not accepted to these schools received state subsidy grants to attend northern schools. And it is ironic that many of these disenfranchised students from West Virginia and other southern states ultimately returned to fight for economic and social justice, which transformed their communities and improved the quality of life for everyone. This BU pioneer in my family, Willard Brown, was my mother's brother and the only son of A.H. Brown, a successful entrepreneur and realtor with a fourth grade education. And when Willard returned to Charleston, West Virginia with two BU law degrees, he became the lead lawyer for the West Virginia NAACP 
in the historic U.S. Supreme Court 1954 school desegregation ruling, generally known as Brown v. Board of Education, which was the far-reaching case that included West Virginia and 16 other states. A year later, in 1955, with the help of his son Willard, my grandfather filed the lawsuit that prevailed against Sky Chief Restaurant, desegregating lunch counters in Charleston at the airport, uh, known as Yeager Airport. And then moving forward in time, in 1963, Uncle Willard, as the president of the local NAACP for nearly 16 years, organized the West Virginia delegation to the 1963 March on Washington. And it was on that trip that I was an eyewitness to history and first heard Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., one of the most celebrated BU alumni. This was surely a defining moment in my youth that significantly has influenced my life's journey. Willard went on to become the first African-American attorney to sit as a judge in court at a court of record in West Virginia. He was subsequently elected to the Charleston City Council. He litigated the most civil rights cases filed in West Virginia back to 1935. His accomplishments are too numerous to mention here. It is fair to say, however, that he lived a busy life, dedicated to service, and the state of West Virginia, and in fact, the entire country received a great ROI, or return on investment, from Willard's BU education. His legacy endures as a champion for civil rights, especially matters of race, justice, and inclusion. Another character in the family tree that may inspire the storytellers and creative spirits among you in the class of 2016 is Willard's sister, Della Brown, my mom. She arrived on the BU campus in 1943, also from West Virginia State College, where she studied pre-med. But in Boston, she pursued her love of art and earned her MFA in 1945, remaining in Boston for a decade while working at the Fogg Museum on the other side of the river and teaching art in local schools. Ultimately though, Della returned as well to Charleston, West Virginia with her BU training and dedicated her career to lifelong learning and teaching, becoming a professor at West Virginia State. And when she retired after a 30 year stint there, she left as the chair of the art department of the college. Always a risk taker, Della applied for a sabbatical a year before her retirement to complete her residency and her coursework at Kent State University for the doctorate she always dreamed of. When asked why she chose to pursue this lofty goal at such a late stage in her career, she promptly replied, and I quote, to be an example for my three adult children my seven grandchildren, and to demonstrate to other people with a passion that it's never too late to pursue your dreams. She subsequently retired to a coastal community in Massachusetts, where the Obamas like to vacation in the summer, that will not be named, to complete her dissertation. And in 1994, at the age of 72, I had the pleasure of witnessing my mother receive her PhD. Finally, we are pleased that the Howard Gottlieb Archival Research Center here at BU requested Della's papers in 2006, and more than 200 boxes of materials, including diaries back to 1937, her dissertation notes, and more than 300 obituaries remembering family and friends, many written by her, are in the Muger Library to inform and enlighten scholars and researchers with an interest in examining Della's life and her legacy. So that's Della's legacy, a proud Boston University grad. But once again, I ask you, each of you, in the class of 2016, to take a moment and ask yourself the question, what do you want your legacy to be? My own life story is still being written. Each day brings a certain amount of wonder and possibility. 
Recently, I assumed leadership, as you heard, of the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, a museum of the future about the past. This role has made me even more keenly aware of the importance of legacy from an institutional as well as an individual perspective and the value of preserving history while also reinterpreting the lessons of the past to promote future civil and human rights efforts in the US and worldwide. Each of you has an open invitation to come and visit the Institute, and it may actually be a good place for you to, re to reflect upon this idea of legacy. Last week, I participated in two separate events that are illustrative. The first was the Day of Remembrance Program sponsored by the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, D.C. that honored the rapidly dwindling population of Holocaust survivors who are among us. And the second event was in Birmingham, uh, the Foot Soldiers Reunion that honored the students who were terrorized with dogs, hoses, jail, and bombings in 1963 when they participated in the Children's March and the movement led by Dr. King and other leaders. Your journey is just beginning at a time when the world continues to evolve in dynamic and dramatic ways. The need for innovative solutions, new knowledge, improved communications, and better human relations in and between people locally, nationally, and globally has never been greater. Societies have always looked to young people to lead the way, to be disruptors, to challenge authority, to bring forth new ideas that will transform our communities. There are many, many pathways to success. There are no cookie cutter guidelines. There are no right or wrong answers. However, knowledge of what previous generations have done can be a guide, but new models, I repeat, new models are required to deal with the challenges of today's world. Some qualities for success don't change, such as leadership, vision, adaptation, innovation, and commitment. How they are applied in today's context is what's important. But looking back 35, 45, or even 50 years from this graduation day, I ask again, what will your legacy be? It may sound like a long time from now, but take it from me, and I have the gray hair to prove it. It will be here before you know it. No one knows for sure at the start of life journey, at life's journey what lies ahead, but everyone leaves a legacy, whether planned or not. Surprisingly, a hundred years passes quickly, as my family story can attest. So take the long view. In the era of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other tech tools that populate the contemporary landscape, I encourage you to take some downtime. Pause from time to time to think about what you could accomplish through leadership, disruption, and public service. There will be plenty of opportunities to apply your knowledge and training as effective communicators to move people to tears and to spur action. In our rapidly changing society, there are an infinite set of issues clamoring for attention. Climate change, quality education, health and wellness, infrastructure, poverty, urbanization, just to name a few. And the cacophony of voices in the public square often becomes quite shrill, and truth remains elusive. Those who take the time to understand what's happening, and importantly, why things are happening, will be able to chart new paths for others to follow. Regardless of who you are in terms of gender, race, ethnicity, national origin, or other characteristics, the potential that you have to be great and to make a difference resides within each of you. What you choose to do with this amazing gift of a Boston University education is hanging in the balance 
and I ask that you leave here today with the willingness to consider a plan of action to identify, commit to, and achieve your personal and professional goals. You have unlimited potential. The world needs you and all young people to continue the legacy, to be the stewards of the planet, and to contribute to human development for all people. Your journey is just beginning. The whole world is watching and cheering from the sidelines as millennials, the generation of which you are a part, steps onto the world stage with the energy and the desire to transform local, national, and global society. Remember, defining and expanding your legacy begins now. As communicators, use your voices wisely. We are listening. I leave you with dreams by poet Langston Hughes. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field filled with snow. Good luck and enjoy the journey as you build your legacy. Savor the moment, class of 2016. Thank you again.